welcome to the McGuffey Museum on the beautiful campus of Miami University. You're not here in Oxford, Ohio. Today we are going to be doing just a little tour of the building, learning a little bit about one of Miami University's most famous professors, William McGuffey, the creator of the McGuffey Reader. For those of you who have looked into historical English, teaching methods. The McGuffey Reader was one of the first textbooks in history and it was a very huge advancement in education at the time. So we're here in the living room right now and we're just going to be walking through his house from his time in Miami. We have the McGuffey family silver, donated by Charles McGuffey Hepburn. A lot of the family's original instruments, dining instruments, which is really cool. And we have some information about Miami's history and how it relates. So this right here is the Ohio State Normal School, one of the two schools for teachers or normal colleges authorized in 1902 by the state of Ohio. One was in Oxford and one was at Ohio University. The institution, uh, in the, writing the history of the school, Dr. Kate observed the institution immediately transformed the 90-year-old university by admitting the bulk of Miami's first women students and students of color, hiring some of its most distinguished men and women faculty. It was housed in McGuffey Hall, which included facilities for faculty, students, and a selective admission school. In 1916, it was renamed the Miami Teachers College and offered one of the nation's first four-year courses in athletic coaching, laying the foundation for one of Miami University's monikers, the Cradle of Coaches, due to the number of coaches that we've had who have worked for Miami and then gone on to work in the NFL. In 1977, the school changed its name to reflect its pre-professional education programs in family and consumer sciences, health, physical education, and later social work. Uh, for most of the 20th century, McGuffey Hall was the largest academic building on Miami's campus. That's fascinating. We have here the McGuffey family dining room. This right here, a triumph of silver craftsmanship. This one-of-a-kind sterling silver epergen was made to commemorate one of the greatest architectural achievements of the 19th century. Crafted by the London silversmiths James and Nathaniel Creswick, the colossal centerpiece was preserved to the builder William York following his successful construction of the Victoria Bridge in Glasgow. Along with the personal coat of arms, it features a silver in silver, a precise replica of Victoria Bridge, among other stunning motifs. With its monumental size, unrivaled craftsmanship, and fascinating provenance, it's one of the finest examples of presentation silver on the market. We also have a beautiful piece of furniture here. The Bishop's sideboard. And one of William McGuffey's many clocks. Here we have on display a lot of those McGuffey readers that I was talking about. McGuffey's eclectic reader. They have one for every grade, so we have the third eclectic reader the fourth eclectic reader, the second reader. I'm going to look around to see if I can find a 
information about the McGuffey Reader, some more fascinating history of the reader. This here is the McGuffey Table. Uh, it is an octagonal table which we see almost every day in the library that has an interesting history which many of Miami students don't know. The table was once the property of Professor McGuffey, so long an instructor at Miami and one of the foremost educators of his day. McGuffey had this made for his private study. McGuffey had this made for his private study, made to revolve, and thus enabled him to quickly reach the books that he desired. The, it was at this table that he worked on the famous McGuffey readers that have ever since been the standard of excellence for our schoolwork. When McGuffey left Oxford, he gave this table to Dr. Hepburn, his son-in-law, who kept it for some time in his study and later gave it to the university library. There it now reposes, connecting the present with the glorious past, recalling memories of the great men of the early period of Miami's history, the men who laid the foundation for her present greatness. See one of the early readers? This over here, the classroom printer. I'm very curious has a lot of different words on it. Some presidents, Washington, Roosevelt, Wilson, but also some animals. Pig, horse, dog, hen, cow. Some of the doll, boy, girl, as well as just general letters to be able to spell things out. So this would appears to be the printing plate for McGuffey's readers, what he used to make his readers on, which is fascinating. So this here is interesting. The chalkboard used to be before they had paper and like handwriting books, they would use the slate and chalk in order to complete their reading assignments. So they would get the reading information from inside the reader, they could read it, but then they could also write it out as well on the slate and then just erase it when the lesson was done, allowing everybody to be, allowing everybody to use the same material without going through a lot of paper. You see here the lectern, I'll zoom out a little bit, the lectern that belonged to William Holmes McGuffey was used by him at Miami. It was a gift to the McGuffey family to the museum and is now in his study. You have this cool little sign back here, it's hidden away a little bit, but it says, William McGuffey here wrote his memorable McGuffey readers while a member of the Miami University facility, faculty. In the McGuffey Museum may be seen the table upon request which he completed his readers. And then this would be one of the desks that students would use. The chair up front here, uh, you would sit in it. And then the table you would use is actually the table on the back here. So you'd have a lot of these all in a row and students would write on the desk connected to the chair of the student in front of them. <clears throat> Coming through here, it appears to be a pantry area. Look, some shards of pottery uh, from the McGuffey family as well as a very tasty looking fake pie for decoration. You also see the stove furnace here. They used to have to go get coal, put it in there and heat it up in order to cook things. So that's why it can be taken apart so easily because you have to easily be able to reach the center in order to, in order to fill in the to fill in the fuel. Lastly, you see here some creamers uh, and different things. There's a lot of different serving dishes, some mugs uh, back from the time in the past. And you have this, some of these chairs here. Uh, and there's the little high chair for a smaller child as well.
Here's some information uh, from McGuffey. Now, I'm not sure if this is a team that William McGuffey coached or if this is just information from the athletics coaching program at the McGuffey School at the First Normal School of Ohio that we were talking about earlier. But it's very impressive and from my experience coaching nowadays, very accurate to what we still kind of use today. And this right here is um, the Oxford Free Presses on newspaper clippings on the death certificate of Pat Rodebush, um, who was the son of Wallace and Dorothy Rodebush, who lived in this house. Uh, Pat was a graduate of the McGuffey High School and a member of some fraternities here. Uh, and was post humorously inducted into Miami's Athletic Hall of Fame, which is again very strong due to the strength of the first normal school's coaching program. This is really cool. Also have some very beautifully designed candle holders. The long tapered candles. If you go to like a sort of historic, if you go to sort of a like historic, uh, one of the like history parks, a lot of towns will have it about the founding of their town. A big thing that you get to do there is make candles. And they all kind of have that long tapered design. So we've seen a lot of the first floor. Let's go on upstairs then. See. and learn about what is on the second floor of the McGuffey Museum. We have the history room here. So this entire second floor, uh, with the second, up, the upstairs porch at least, used to be a non, used to be like an outdoor porch, but they have since screened it in. They now use it as a work area for the preservation of the McGuffey Museum and McGuffey's legacy. A lot of history of Miami University here. A lot of very interesting artifacts. For example, this bishop chest of drawers. This chest was used by the families of the first university president, Robert Hamilton Bishop, and his son, Robert Hamilton Bishop Jr. We have this very ornate chair, Alexander Hamilton McGuffey's chair, uh, the carved motto. Let me see if I can find where it is on the chair. Mm, I don't see it, but the motto on the chair is Nemo me lasset impune. is translated to I will harm you if you harm my good name. This chair belonged to the younger brother of Williams Holmes McGuffey, Alexander Hamilton McGuffey, who was a successful attorney in Cincinnati. The chair stood in the hallway of his law office per and personified the discomfort and story that that clients seated in it would be anxious to reach a settlement of their claims in order to escape sitting here any longer. So it was a chair that was 
in theory designed to be as uncomfortable as possible in order to squeeze the money out of him. He really was a successful lawyer, wasn't he? Very pretty picture of, I assume, Miami's campus. Robert Frost once referred to it as the most beautiful campus that ever there was, and all of us here at Miami completely agree with him. And we have a map right here of the university. I'm gonna look around a little bit. And some very fascinating Fascinating. This is the first time I've ever seen this map, so forgive me for taking a quick second and looking at it a little more in depth. This is really, really cool. And that's where we are right now, the McGuffey House. Oh, well, that's awesome. Well, Miami Oppressor Hall on Western College home of the historic Miami Men's Glee Club. You should look at some of their music on Spotify or on YouTube. They are very good. And, or I think on Facebook too, they're doing a lot of music. They're, their music is really good. And they are a historic part of Miami's tradition. This here appears to be used as kind of a game room. This wooden sled found in the attic of this house probably belonged to the Rodebush family. The damage to the sled is evidence it was used as an action toy. Up until the early 20th century, many toys were handmade instead of being manufactured. The fascinating. We've got a salesman's sample of a chest of drawers which is cool I definitely thought they were going to be like a chest of drawers for a doll sort of an American an early American girl dolls type thing and we have some old dominoes here during the 1920s the roaring 20s a domino craze swept the nation influenced by an increased increased interest in Asian culture the unidentifiable Chinese characters on the back of each domino simply exemplify American difficulties with the Chinese language. That is really cool. A little metal action toy showing a Prussian soldier riding a bicycle. It takes two children to play with. Each one would take a piece of the string and basically would play a balancing act with it. That's a lot of fun. Interesting. These dolls, which are still in production, were a bestseller from 1935 to 1938. They were introduced in 35, and they were made by the Madame Alexander Doll Company. It's named McGuffey Anna in order to capitalize on the interest in the McGuffey Reader in the 1930s. So it's actually Anna never appeared first in the name. It was always the McGuffey Anna doll. Fascinating. to give the museum director some privacy. It's on the call right now. Get a old alarm clock, uh, can some candles that they would have on the bedside <coughs> right next to the old style bed. We also have the old spinning wheel which was really cool. <clears throat> we will
this right here is the Miami's house. Huh. Very fascinating. Not sure exactly what that's a model of. It may not be for the McGuffey Museum. It may be for something else on campus. Then we have this drying rack here. This old-fashioned drying rack where they would dry their clothes back in the day. It appears to be the back side of the administrative part of the museum. So, and then lastly, we have some art made by McGuffey's seventh grade class in 1977, which is just extremely well done and very fascinating. So, anyway, we appreciate you taking the time with us today in order to come to the William Holmes McGuffey House in Ohio. It is a registered national landmark by the Department of the Interior, which is really cool. And then they modernized it a little bit, but there's the old kitchen, but yeah. Thank you very much for coming with us. We hope that you enjoyed it and we'll give you a quick run around the building. First, so that you can kind of see it in all of its glory. It is snowing here on this beautiful spring day in Oxford. So I'll be glad that you're taking the virtual tour, not the full tour. Ooh. We have a little porch back here. As well as some, a little garden, which would have just been amazing to see in the springtime. 
It is the Ava Clement Memorial Garden. And then we have another garden over there. Miami University is also considered an arboretum. With the amount of species that we have here on campus and that we maintain here on campus. So it is a very pretty, very amazing place to come. As clearly William McGuffey thought back in the day when he moved here. So feel free to come on down at any time. The last thing I'll show you is the Ohio historical marker in um, William Holmes McGuffey was a Miami University faculty member in 1836 where he compiled the first edition of the McGuffey's eclectic reader in this house his reader taught lessons in reading spelling and civic education by using memorial mem memorable stories of honesty hard work and thrift personal respect and moral and ethical standards alongside illustrative sections from literary works. The sixth edition series increased in difficulty and was developed with the help of his brother, Alexander Hamilton McGuffey. After the Civil War, the readers were the basic school book in 37 states, and by 1920 sold an estimated 122 million copies, reshaping American public school curriculum and becoming one of the nation's most influential publications. It says it's continued on the other side, so we're gonna go check that out. McGuffey lived at this site in a small frame house in 1828 and in 1833 built this brick home in the federal vernacular style common to the area. The west wing was added in about 1860 in the first of a series of renovations typical of 19th century domestic architecture in the Miami Valley. From the 1850 to 1958 several Oxford families owned the property and at the Miami University Cinquentennial in 1958 the university purchased the house from the Wallace P. Rodebush family and it was endowed by Emma Gold Blocker to serve as a museum of university history in honor of McGuffey's legacy. The museum opened to the public in 1960 and the house was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1966. It exhibits such unique artifacts as the octagonal table upon which the McGuffey Eclectic Reader was designed and the lectern McGuffey used as a professor professor of ancient languages and literature and university librarian. So there you have it, the McGuffey building, the McGuffey Museum here at Miami University. Thank you very much for watching this tour and enjoy the rest of your day everybody. Thank you very much.